All right, welcome to the Chaz Palantiri Podcast. We have a new episode today, Old School Guys. And I got one of the classic, classic old school guys. I'm not going to say his name until uh, first I get a little house, housekeeping right now. And you know what that is. You want to see my one-man show? ChazPalmentary.net. Got to go to it. See the one-man show. Go to my site. I'm doing shout-outs. Anything like that, happy birthday or anniversaries, I send you a little video. Check out the site. Also, I speak to a lot of young kids now about not wasting their talent. You know, I wrote this movie, A Bronx Tale, and the message in it, I have so many parents who tell me, you know, I, I took my son, my daughter to see a movie, and they love the movie. Kids weren't even born when I did this, folks. And they love the message about wasted talent. So I actually send a little message to your kid or your spouse or, or a friend or somebody who just needs a little uh, motivation. So you can go to chazpalmentary.net and uh, make an appointment and we'll, and we'll have that happen. Uh, also, like I said, October 1st, don't forget October 1st. I start doing the show again in September, but October 1st, I'm doing Broadway for one night only. One night, I'm going to be doing a Q&A afterwards for the first time in 34 years I've been doing the show. First time, I'm going to talk about the movie, the musical, and how the one-man show started and how it all happened with all three, with all three. I got some surprise guests coming. I can't mention who they are. Depending on uh, their schedule, we'll see what happens, folks. But that's October 1st at the Town Hall. Go to chazpalmentary.net for merchandise and for tickets. Okay, now you know me, folks. Old school. Why do I do old school? I do it because I'm old school. I grew up uh, 187 in the Belmont in the Bronx, and I started having all these old school guys on, and people just loved it. I mean, my, my dream would have been to have Eddie Mush on. Now, Eddie Mush was Eddie Mush in the movie from my neighborhood, and he would have been. I hear people that actually say the words, I've been mushed. Hey, don't do that. You're going to get mushed. The man is part, John, he's part of the culture now. Eddie Mush, his name is part of the, the American dialogue. You believe this? I believe it. I was at the first, I mean, the Belmont for the first time last week, and that's all I could think about was Eddie Mush. Eddie Mush. I mean, that was Eddie Mush in the movie. I wish I could get him on. And, of course, Frankie Coffee Cake and all those guys. But I don't have them, but I got some of the classic old school guys. And I got one of them here today with me. Folks, you've seen him on Instagram, on Twitter, You've seen him performing live. He actually, I saw him live. He is fucking hilarious. Hilarious. It's one of those guys you can't stop laughing. I mean, truly, truly funny. Uh, I really want to say his name right because he gets very upset about that. People keep messing up his name. He's hysterical. If you ever get a chance to see this guy in person, put it on your bucket list. The guy is great. Here he is, old school to the epitome of old school, Vic DiBetetto. Vic, look. DiBetetto. <laughs> D I B I Chaz. Just look at the letters. D. Let's take the D I and put it on the side for now. D-I. So it says Petetto, okay? Petetto. Petetto. Sounds like Geppetto. So let's bring the D back. Put it next to the. the it's D Petetto. You know not what? diabetes, not the potato, not your sister's ass. It's, it's <laughs> D Petetto. But thank you for having me. Oh, God. Oh, no, but you're right. It's easy to say. You take the D, put it on the side. Yeah, put it over there. Over Potato. there. Petetto. Remember, good D- fellas, over there. Put it over there. Put it on. D Petetto. Beautiful. I, I, I swear to God, that's great. You did fine. That's great, D. Botetto. Now, now, Vic. I mean, people who have never seen your your uh, podcast or your um, your social media. I mean, you gotta tune into this guy. He's hysterical. What I, I gotta say, you're a neighborhood guy. You grew mm-hmm. up where? Gravesend. Gravesend, which we will talk about later. We're doing. Uh, we're both on that series. I can't wait to. See. I saw the the, the teaser. You yeah. look. So do I. We both look good. <laughs> We both look good. That's, that's, I don't, I don't and by the way, it. you know, when you said that about the uh, nothing worse than wasted talent. Right. Let me tell you something. Another one that really hit home for me was the working man is the tough guy. That's right. And 
I drove a school bus, a dump truck, a garbage truck. I drove my garbage truck to Dangerfields in New York City. I asked the manager, if I pick up your garbage, can you give me stage time? Are you kidding? I mean, come on. You think Jerry Seinfeld ever had to do that? Please. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's, folks, what do I say? 90% of life is just showing up. Mm -hmm. Am I right? So many people, they, you know, these, you know, especially where we come from, Vic. How many guys, well, I never caught a break, I never caught a break. You never caught a break because you never did anything. Exactly. You got to never give up, never surrender. Forge your head. Forge your the, head. The more you complain, the more you're going to make yourself miserable and sick. Just, right. What are you going to do? Just do the best you can. Do, do the best you I'm can. I'm lucky. I can't complain. I'm doing better than most, not as good as some. Right. I'm, hap I'm happy. But you're happy. I can see it in your eyes, and that's why you're successful, because you're grateful. Exactly. You're grateful. And when you're grateful, you'll, you'll always have enough. If you're not grateful, you'll never have Absolutely. enough. Absolutely. You know, if everything could stay the way it is right now, who cares? You know, I say that. I, just leave it the way it is. Right? I'm good. This is bad? I'm this is bad? We are playing with house money. From where we came from, we're playing with house exactly. money. Exactly. Are you, but you got you to gotta take me from the beginning. All of a sudden, here's this kid, grows up in Gravesend. You got wackos, you got killers, you got cops, you got nuts. Yep. You want, when, when did this comedian thing, what, what, okay. what happened? I was the class clown, okay? I was sneaky funny. When the teacher would turn the back and write on a chalkboard, for the younger people, Google chalkboard. Anyway, I'd, I'd make animal noises. I'd, I'd imitate the teachers. Fast forward, there was a comedy club in Sheepshead Bay, not far from Gravesend, and a friend yeah. of mine said, they have an amateur night there. Why don't you give it a shot? I went on stage, the needle was hooked, and that's it. Wow. I, I made people laugh. Fast forward, I'm selling out theaters and clubs. I'm doing uh, Gravesend for William. Kevin James put me a mall cop too. I had a viral video. I signed with a great manager. I mean, I'm 61, you know? I'm still fighting the fight, but I'm having fun. You know, I love being on stage. There's nothing like it. When did you feel, now you went from this guy who was a garbage man who begged for time, which we all know what that's like. When did you say, you know what, I'm... I'm here now. I, I, I'm making money. I, I do this for a living. I, I'm good. When, when did that happen, you think? When I drove, when I had my fourth job, driving a school bus, my manager sat me down and says, you don't need to do this anytime. You could do this comedy full time. Wow. And I got a viral video called Bread and Milk, which went viral because I played this maniac. I got to get the bread and milk. I got to get the, you know, when they see the snowflakes during a snow, snow that went viral in two days. Really? It, it struck a nerve with people. But could you just tell us a little bit? What was it like, bread and milk? Could you just do I opened the door to my house. My right. wife didn't want to cook, first of all. This is a true story. She didn't want to cook. She's go out and get Is she something. Italian? Yeah, she's Italian. And she didn't want to cook? Yeah, well, we got we to It's talk. a trade-off when you're I, married. I'm just kidding. You know, because I, I wanted something else that night, and she said, all right, then go get something to cook. I got gotcha. you. So I open the door, I see a snowflake. And right away, I thought of all those people that panic when they see a snowflake. I'm, I gotta get the bread. I had the camera like this. I gotta get the bread and milk. Get the 26 seconds from my car, from my house to the car. Got me more recognition than at that time, 30 years of stand up. Wow. The social media. Social I'm this media. 61 year old chooch using the social media that these millenn millennials, I can't even say the word, millennials use. Yes. And it's, it's, I got a huge following. Wow. Bread and milk. Well, it's true, but when the snow does. Bread, we're from the old school. Right. Hey, got to get bread and milk. Right. God forbid. making French toast? What, what's, what's the story? <laughs> God forbid we get stuck. Exactly. Come on, where, where do we live in? We're living in Biafra? Where are we living right. here? Just get in a car, go to the store, get some bread and milk. And it hit, it hit a nerve. Not only New York, New England, everywhere but Florida. Now, your mom and dad, what, was, what did your dad do? My father was a waste removal engineer, a garbage man. Garbage man. Yeah, or garbologist. <laughs> he owned two trucks. He owned two trucks. Private sanitation. No, he wasn't connected. Private sanitation, two trucks. He owned two trucks? Yeah. Me and my brother drove the trucks. Wow. And 1996, 1996, Giuliani came along to clean up everything, and we sold it to the wise guys, and I moved to Florida for four years, and I was miserable. I came back to do warm-up for a TV show, and that's where I met my manager, and everything just skyrocketed. And wow. it's just been a beautiful journey, man. Now, you know? were your parents, did they get a chance to see your success? My parents, yeah, once they saw me. My father passed at 65. Right. He was right off, he was, everything in my house was from the, the, that garbage. We had a chair with three legs. Instead of fixing it, <laughs> put it in the corner. It won't tip over. So he would... So he had he a would, ladder with one leg. I'm like, Dad, it's the letter H. Throw the damn, he brought the shit home <laughs> from the garbage. My father-in-law, may he rest in peace, retired longshoreman. 
you know, my, he, he would say half a word, but we knew what he meant. Right. I need operation. Where's my medication? I got to go on vacation. Call the sanitation. <laughs> I'm like, what are you, a fucking crossword puzzle? Spit it out. This, wow. You can't write this shit. My mother-in-law, I took her to Atlantic City. The stuff that'll come out of from Italians, we are, are the funniest people, man. Right. I, mean, I don't mean to be. No, exactly. I don't mean to I'm be. I'm like, Mom, what hotel you want to go to? Ah, I want to go to Touch of My Hole. She meant the Taj Mahal. <laughs> It took me two weeks to figure this shit out. She calls the UPS truck the up US truck. I mean, come on. This is beautiful. Oh, my God. You know, you can't... My, my mom, a quick thing, my mom was on it, was trying to lose weight. So I told her, I said, I bought you the Jenny Craig thing. I, I paid for it. I said, look, Mom, do this Jenny Craig. You got to follow the thing, eat the food. Five days later, I call her up. I go, how did it do? She, she says, I gained three pounds. I said, how could you gain three pounds? Did you eat the Jenny Craig? She goes, yeah. I go, then it's impossible to gain three pounds. She goes, I did just what you said. I wake up in the morning. She goes, I eat my Jenny Craig. Then I have my breakfast. And then <laughs> I go, Ma, Ma, she would eat the Jenny Craig with the meal. Yep. I said, no, it, it substitutes the meal, Ma. My wife did Jenny Craig. Yeah. I mean, when we first got married, she came up. Remember the VHS tapes? Yes. She had Jane Fonda's thin thighs in 30 days. I said, you should have got big tits in two minutes. <laughs> we didn't talk for two weeks. But she's my rock. That's you know, right. If your wife is behind you, that's half the battle. That's right. Happy life. Happy, happy wife, wife. Happy life. Exactly. As they say. As, as they say. I mean, that's... So, I mean, I know we went through this thing with COVID. I know COVID oh, affected... Boy. I know COVID affected my wow. business. Yeah, me too. You know, the movies, the uh, yep. Broadway, uh, my show was on the road, the musical. What did you... How did you what did you do in COVID? Chaz, all my shows were canceled. Yeah, me too. I had whiteout on the whole calendar. Right. I was doing virtual shows. It was horrible. First of all, they they send you a link. Just click... They send you an email. Just click on the link. No, it's never what they say. Never. First of all, my kids are out of the house. I'm no good with this shit. You're yeah. clicking on the link. Nothing's happening. It's 10 minutes to show time. I'm getting agitated. You finally get that wheel. Host will let you in. I got hypnotized by the fucking thing. <laughs> Then, slowly but surely, you see the faces come on. It's all people my age. And nobody knows what to do. It looks like the fucked up Brady Bunch. We're all looking at each other. <laughs> One guy is like, can you hear me? It was horrible. I was going right. to bed after Jeopardy. I was bored out of my mind. Wow, wow, wow. But it's coming back slowly. You know? It's coming it's, back. It's coming slowly. back. I, I, we I, need I, to laugh now more than ever. The world is upside down. Really? Because you think, because of the way we're doing it. it COVID kind of changed everything. Yes. When you say I don't know if there's ever going to be a new normal, whatever the hell that is. Yeah. What I is went the for the normal? test. You went for the what, COVID test? Yeah. Well, I had to because they wouldn't let me play Foxwoods in Connecticut. The oh. lady, the doctor whips out a Q-tip. This, I'm like, where's that going? Says, we got to swab your nose. I mean, can I lick it? I might be sticking <laughs> in my ass. You're going to give me a fucking lobotomy with that thing. <laughs> but I, I tested negative. Thank God. Oh. Everything's okay. Yeah. Oh, forget about when you do a series. Oh, when I was doing a movie. Tested every yep. day. We had to do it on Gravesend. Every set. day. Yeah, every day. Every day. I mean, after a while, you just say, come on, could we, could we start living our lives exactly. here? Exactly. I don't, wear the mask. I don't want to wear the mask, but I wore the mask, you know? I went to CVS. That's where I go. I hang out at CVS. I'm right. 61. I meet three guys in aisle three. We play cards. We got the lawn chairs because <laughs> I get my cholesterol medicine delivered. Right. And they give you a choice. You could come in or, we, or, or deliver. No, I'm getting the fuck out of the house. I'm coming in. Right. I get out of the car. I'm, I'm sure you've done this. You get yeah. out of the car. You get to the door. Fuck, I forgot my mask in the car. I'm running oh. back. I got 10 hanging from the rear view mirror, 20 in the glove compartment. Right. I walk in with the mask. I go to the back. It says pickup drop-off consultation. Then that is a pharmacist behind pickup. He's got the mask, plexiglass. I got the mask. I am here to pick up my medication. The guy's just staring at me. I guess he didn't hear me. Right. D Batetto, D-I-B-I. <laughs> Nothing. Just now I hear this Billy Idol song, Eyes Without a Face. My birthday is 2961. Nothing. D potato. D as in dick. I as an idiot. B as in bitch. I as an imbecile. T as in tit. E as an emotional. T as in tit. T as another fucking tit. Oh, as an oblivious. He rips off his man. I'm not making this up. Excuse me, I'm deaf. They can't read your lips. Like, holy shit. Oh, my God. Folks, I'm not making fun of deaf people. Could you imagine what they went through with the man's situation? I felt bad. I'm like, I. Buddy, I, I didn't know. As I'm talking to this guy, there's this lady next to me. She got the man. Hey, asshole, put on your mask. What do I come up with? Fuck you. <laughs> the deaf guy goes, like me. You, but, no, no, fuck you. Fuck up. Fuck her. She's done my tight. I'm like, holy shit. Oh you have any Xanax back there where you're at it? 
I'm sorry if I'm spitting all over your table, Chad. No, no, I, can't, no, I okay. can't help it. This because when I'm at this how I when I'm home I can't say shit. My daughter rolls her eyes, my son calls me an asshole, my wife leaves her. So I just sit there like the fucking Lincoln Memorial at home. So when I'm on stage, that, that's how I vent. You vent. And I say what people are thinking. I, I listen, I love it. I saw your your, your podcast. It, that's why you're on the show, man. You're you're a classic, man. And no, please, I mean that. Your, your, your vents are, are classic. They're like legendary, you know. One went viral. Love. Message to the government went viral because I was talking about the stimulus check. 33 million views in two days on Facebook. I mean, well, all, t- my t- videos, tell us, tell us about all my videos put together, me and my manager, we figured it's, it's got to be billions of views between Jesus Facebook, God. Instagram, your sister's ass, the Pony Express, Google <laughs> Plus, whatever. It's, you know, I get recognized. I got recognized in Scotland. I'm, I'm walking the streets in Scot, you know, with the Scottish accent, right, right, trying right. to say "De Potato," and he said it right. I couldn't fucking believe it. Like fat bastard said my name right. I will never f- De Potato. See, I can't because you, you separated it for me. That's all. Now, when you talked about uh, the the checks, what did you say about that? About how the twelve hundred dollars. What is that going to do for the average American family? Right. They should just freeze all payments till this thing is over. Freeze payments Just for homes. Or- home loans, freeze everything. Wow. And it wow. went viral. It was going, you know, it, it's just. Because people felt that way. Yes. That's what. I hit a nerve. That's the whole timing with, with, when you got to do a video. You got to, it's got to, it's all, it's all right timing. place, right time. Yeah, there was a guy that did this thing where ocean spray. He was, did you see that one? Ocean spray. He was just on a skateboard and he, and he was playing ocean spray, the song. And he was drinking ocean spray. There you go. 90 million. There you go. I said, what did he do? I spent, I don't know how much money on studio time. This guy's on a fucking skateboard. Somebody gets an iPhone and films him 90 million. Makes no sense. You could go on TikTok and dance like a fucking idiot and you're a star. It's it's crazy. But put these people on a stage in front of 3,000 people and let me see what you could do for an hour. Yeah. You know, you know, people don't, some of these people have gotten careers, but they usually die down, right. you know, but hey, they make a lot of money while they're right. doing it. God bless them. And I say, I'm always happy for other people's success. When I see successful people, it motivates me. Yeah. I'll never understand hatred and negativity. It's just, yeah. there's well, a piece of the pie for everybody. I don't you know? want to say it and, and probably they're going to criticize me for it, but I have to say it, not all. Not all, but uh, not you, not me, but a lot of Italians don't like to see other Italians succeed. Why Am is I right that? or wrong? How, why is that? We it, are the mo- we are jealous of each other. I'm, you know, I look, Chaz. I grew up in a typical Italian family in the basement. Upstairs was for show. Right. We had the picture of Jesus Christ shaking hands with Frank Sinatra. <laughs> the plastic runners that started in the kitchen and wound up in the garage. Right. We had the the, the lady holding the jug of water. You know, with the cup of the moon tits. Right, right. The plastic right. runner. I mean, I typical Italian. We are the most beautiful. We got the best culture. Why? Why are we jealous of one another? Yeah, there's it's, a difference. I noticed the that. The Jews stick together, you know? Jews. Oh, the Jews are the best. The Jews stick together. I had an Italian landlord and a Jewish landlord. I'd rather have the Jewish landlord. Any, any day of the week. Any day of the week. Didn't break my balls. Nothing. Right. The Italian ones, it's like, you ever see the crabs in a barrel, Vic? Crabs are about one. As soon as one crab starts going up, they go like this. They pull them right, right. down. Again, right. I want to be clear now, folks. I want to be clear. I'm looking right at the camera. Not all right. Italians. Not all Italians. But a lot of Italians, as they say, jealous. They're jealous. And uh, it's like the Jewish people, if I'm doing a charity for uh, the NYPD, or for, I do a lot of stuff for right. the police. Good law for you, man. And uh, I raise money and... You speak to uh, the Jewish people who, uh, who live near me. What? It's for what? Oh, yeah. They write a check. I go to the Italian people. I go, I go. yeah, listen, this is for... He goes, uh, well, what are you getting? I said, well, no, this it's all going to go. You're gonna, are you going to put signs up? And, well, no, this is for the cop. Well, if if you put names, is my name going to go on the top? Oh, yeah, yeah, is yeah, my yeah. name yeah, going to go on the top? I'm like, just give me the... Just give the fucking money, babe. Unreal. It's for a good cause. Well, if I put this much, why is his name going to go above right. mine? Because they had like bricks to put up high brick. Why is his brick higher than my brick? And you know what? I go, Vic, it's okay. Keep your fucking money. Yeah, exactly. Are you going to do it from the heart? Or don't do it. Yep. Don't do it. Getting back to your movie, The Bronx Tale. Right. Let him keep the 20 bucks. That's the best 20 bucks. And you know what? I love that. Yeah, you know what? That, I, that's like a, you know, that movie was a life history, man. It was, it was yeah. really beautifully it's done. It's an amazing thing because 
and, and look, Godfather is an incredible movie. Oh, Godfather, uh, you is know, we put the Godfather. Right. I'm not going to pair my movie to that, but I'm, I'm, what I what I can say is, just like The Godfather, my movie has seeped its way into the culture of America, yes. where people go, "Hey, now you just can't leave." You know, think, how many times oh, have so you heard that? Mo- oh, all you know, the time. Uh, it all cost the me time. twenty dollars to get rid of him. Hey, throw him in the bathroom. Is it better to be loved or feared? All of that stuff has seeped its way into the dialogue yep. of American uh, yep. literature. You know, it's so. Just- um, and Raging Bull, that was another oh, one. I mean, Raging Bull. I right. could do the whole movie for you now, but that's it's just yeah. Raging Bull, Bronx Tale, yeah. Godfather, and Goodfellas. Those yeah. are my. Oh, good. If I'm on an island. That's those are the movies I want. Yeah, I, but I, but you see, the thing that makes and those are all classic. But the thing that makes Bronx Tale different, people think it's not a gangster movie. Right. It's it's a family movie. Your father was trying to get it, get you away from that life. My father, Lorenzo, was a bus driver. Said, "No, you're not going to do this." What made it different was Sonny, who was a got mobster, said the same thing my father said. Just that because of who Sonny was, he didn't like it. Right. So that's what makes the story great. It's not about black and white. It's about gray. And great gray. story. It's about gray. Anyway, yep. but uh, I'm glad that you like it. I mean, so. Uh, people sometimes they don't get along with their fa- mother-in-law, father-in-law. You get along with them good. My mother-in-law, she's the best. She passed away in December. Um, but you got along with her great. Yeah, I don't Isn't understand these great? guys. They hate Isn't their that... mother-in-laws. I, she was she was like a second mother to me. She's in a lot of my videos, and people, oh my god, she reminds me of my grandmother. She's right. Bades. She's got that. She's got uh, Bades. Are you Bades? Yeah. Oh now, Bades, for the, all the people out there, don't, Bades is like a whole, it's like Chinese to the rest of Italy. Yeah. Shamanu, Shamani. Oh, my God. That's my mom law used to say that. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh exactly. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I, Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, Bades is like. I got goosebumps. Bades, the. Where, what the hell did that mean? She said that all the time. Uh, here, all right, if you want to go here, no, we'll go. It's something, it's one of those. If you want to go, you can go. If you don't want to go, don't go. It's one of those. <laughs> You know, uh, it's... Uh, Say it again. Shamani, shamana. Wait, now you, I just said it from memory. Shamani, shamana. What? It's Shamwell? Yeah, it's like... Oh. It's like like Sicilian dialect. Right. You're Sicilian? I'm 100% Sicilian. Like Sicilian is, uh, when you say, let's go, is andiamo. Right. Andiamo. In, uh, How about allora? What allora. does that mean? Allora. Uh, that means okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Uh, when, when you say in, in Sicilian, it's not... Uh, you know, you don't say, uh, it's, uh, wait, what did I just say? It's like, let's go, is Amonine. In Sicilian, uh, Sicilian, it's Amonine. That's from totally the different. Yeah, Ito, uh, Amonine. Amonine. Remember Bruno Carby? Yes. Ito, Amonine, Ito, let's Amonine. go. Yeah. That's Sicilian. Right, okay. A stone cold Sicilian. Got it. Jeppazonia and Amani. <laughs> you know, it's it's like, it's like, what? What? I mean, other Italians can't understand it, but you're right. Bades is the hardest. Yep. Bades is the heart. Yes, and I'm trying to teach my kids the culture, but, it, you know, the world is changing. Now, how you old know? is your, your kids? My son is uh, 35, my daughter is 30. Both kids moved to Scotland. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> don't ask. Okay, you got to you gotta elaborate on I this. I will elaborate. They, they, first of all, I've never seen a close of uh, brother and sister. They're That's very great. close. Yeah, yes. They went to Scotland. They went backpacking. To in Scotland Europe. together? Yeah. How old is your daughter? She's 30, and he's 35. I mean, my son is 26 and my daughter is 20, so they're not, they're not that close. I mean, they're really close, yeah. but you would think... They're very they close. Uh, they my fell st- in love with it. They so- liked it so much. Yeah. They went back again, and they both met somebody. No yeah. way. And my son, he came out seven years ago. Now I you- kind of knew, because now, when he played now- soccer, he kicked the ball funny. I could tell something was up. So your son is gay? Yes. Now, okay. I mean, that's interesting. Now, you're a neighborhood guy. Right. A Brooklyn street guy. Back when we were growing up, forget it. Forget it. I mean, hey, look at this Fenoikia, you know? Exactly. It's, it's, but what are you going to do? That's my blood. That's my son. Absolutely. You know? and, and that, I think my father would have been proud of him, believe it or not. First of all, I, I mean, I think that's wonderful. First of all, I can never understand, Vic, and I'm going to let you talk about this, that somebody who says, ah, you know, his son is gay or his daughter's gay, and I always say to them, would you rather they not be happy? Do you want to see your daughter or your son happy? Look, asking them to date another girl or date a guy is like asking me to date a guy. I can't do it. It's, it's not here. Right. So you're asking them to do the same exactly. thing. Exactly. Don't you want to see them happy? Exactly. 
I mean, God. I talk about this in my act, and I tell, I step out, and I put the mic down. I said, folks, if you suspect your kid is gay, would you rather him come out of the closet or hang himself in the closet? Wow. And it gets a huge applause. I get parents coming up to me, and I mean, I hugged them. I'm like, Mike. And I started tearing up. He says, Daddy, why are you tearing up? I said, well, next time Mommy goes to Home Goods, you're going to fucking take her. <laughs> I know you people love that shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Then he started tearing up. What are you tearing I can't wait. When is she going? Wow. Every time he's here, he's in for the week for this week. Every time he, I love him, but he knows how to spend. I have the the prodigal gay son. He loves to redecorate. Oh, they holy! Oh, yeah. and, then, and between but, Joanna Gaines and those those two <laughs> those those property brothers, they look right. like two beavers. They they put these ideas in my wife's head between that and a gay son. I, I, if I come home now, a room's going to be entirely redone. But they know how to do it. Oh my God! I mean, they do that's it. That's the thing. When that's the done, thing. I'm like, wow, this is nice. right. That's sad. Yes. I mean, you go to West Hollywood. You go to Christopher Street. Those places are immaculate. Yes. Immaculate. Gay people bring back neighborhoods. They brought back Asbury Park. That's right. They spend money. They're fun to hang out with. Right. You know, my son was an artist. He he graduated FIT in New York City, full scholarship. Made the honors four years in a row. Wow. I sent this kid to Stop and Shop one night to get lettuce. He comes back with cabbage. The fucking moron. He says, "Oh man, what's the difference? What the difference? You're an asshole. <laughs> asshole, street smarts, idiot, common sense. How the fuck did you come for my balls? How the hell did this happen? He's an artist. He." One winter, instead of helping me shovel the snow, he painted a picture of me shoveling the snow. That's great, Mike. Why don't you put mommy and daddy having a heart attack in a front lawn, put you and your sister playing video games, and I'll be upstairs reading Fifty Shades of Grey for your mother. Oh, my God. He's an artist, but I love him. He's you a good kid. I mean, He's happy. Was he nervous when he told you he was coming out? Yes. Very. So you didn't know and your wife didn't know? We, I suspected it. You, sus you suspected it for how long? I'm just A couple curious. of years. A couple of years? Yeah. I'm like, I tell my wife, isn't he going to fucking come out around? I don't give a shit. Well, how old was he when he came out? Uh, you remember? 20. 20, wow. So he waited. Yeah. Wow. And I could see when I hugged him, kissed him, he was relieved. It's okay, Mike. It's going to be okay, you know? I mean, and it's nobody's story. business. I would go to jail for him if anybody ever heard him, you know? It's that's nobody's a business. That's a beautiful story. Just mind man. your business. I mean, that's Everybody a beautiful... just needs to live and let live. You know what? Some people... And I'm not just saying all Italians, but some people, some parents out there, if you suspect your son or your daughter is gay, whatever, it's like, make it easy for them. Exactly. Because if they have your love, that's like a load. Yep. A load. Yep. Off. Absolutely. Off of them. Mm -hmm. Because every child, no matter you're gay or straight or trans, you want the love of your, your mom and dad. That that's love is... Absolutely important. That's a person. That person has feelings and emotions. Right. Just, eh, it's a crazy world. That's why I'm here to make people laugh, you know? Right. We need to laugh. You need to laugh. We all need to laugh. You need, you More need to, than ever. You need to laugh. And how, are you enjoying your times on Gravesend now? Let me tell you something. William DeMeo, you know, when you have somebody believe in you, I mean, my manager called me up. I almost hung up the phone. Are you kidding me? Right. Yeah, they want to put you in. I'm in season two. He told me I want to be in season three. I'm like... And the thing about that, he, he, you've seen it on the set, he, he never gets upset. And it trickles <sighs> down to the set, to the crew. He never gets flustered. Never gets flustered. You know, Vic, I, got, I made 70 movies. And I say that only because I have never seen a guy who says he's going to do something and then does it. He writes, he directs, yep. he stars in, he produces... And he keeps saying, yeah, I'm going to... For two years, they've been saying, Chaz, I'm getting you on the show. Me too. Two and years. I told my manager, yeah, it's, and it's I not going to happen. I said, well... And, and I was very honest with him. I said, you know, I, I get a lot of money. And, and he said, I'll pay you your price. And I said, Will, it's, it's okay, bro. You know, don't worry about it. Right. But I'm sorry, I can't do favors in my, in my career. I just don't. I don't... Because if I do a favor for one guy, that's it. Exactly. The door is open. Exactly. I, all of a sudden, I get... Script. Then you got to give them a favor. That's why I always pay my way. Oh, I'm going to take you out yeah. to eat. No, no, no. I'm paying. I'm I, paying my I way. I get scripts all the time when they say, could you do one day for this, two days? But I go, no. Right. If you want me to do one or two days, you got to, because it doesn't matter. You're using me. You're using my brand. Right. It's not just me in the movie for two days. Exactly. You're going to say I'm in it. Mm -hmm. That's that's 35, 40 years of working. Yep. So sorry. And then you should feel the same way. Absolutely. You know, so I want to get paid. So, but he, I'm going to get you, he said. Two years later, my yep. agent calls, says, Will, uh, you know, Will the Mayo made the offer. And I go, what? What? 
And he said, yeah, I, I was shocked. Shocked. He did it. He's a good guy. And I did it. He's a good guy. Yep. He works really hard. And it looks good, not because looks, I'm in it, yeah, but it looks season terrific. two looks phenomenal. You know, right? we keep our fingers crossed yep. as always. Uh, it looks really good, and uh, uh, he does a great job. Yes. So people, Graves Ed, coming out this year. And that's where I grew up. You, you grew up And I did a scene with Andrew Dice Clay, wow. who I worked with at Pips in Sheepshead Bay. It's like all come full circle. It, it's crazy. It's surreal. And I'm here with you. This is fucking, I can't believe this. Now, when Bronx Tale came out, you saw it, obviously. Yeah, three, right. five, a million times. Right. And now here we are. Bronx Tale came out in 94. Here we are, like, wow, I don't know, so 25, 27 years ago. Shit. And now we're sitting together doing that. Nobody, if somebody said, well, you're, 27 years from now, you're going to hit and I, you're going to be, you would say. No, exactly. I thought I'd be driving a school bus the rest of my life. Life you know? is weird. It, it is. And John Lennon has a great line. Yeah. Life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. That's a great line. Isn't that a great line? But it's really about, see, when you say that, Vic, and I'm glad we can get serious for a second, it, it means you're showing up. You're doing something. Like I said before, folks, if you're complaining about life, that means you're not doing something. Right. Napoleon Hill always said, it's always your next move. Yep. You gotta get out there. When you do forward motion, Forward motion brings you to a place, sometimes a good place, sometimes a great place, sometimes not a good place, but you got to move forward. Getting back to Bronx Tale, the choices you make. They will shape your life forever. I mean, come on. You realize how great? That was a masterpiece. Well, I mean, thank seriously, you. Seriously. You know, it's one of those things that people go, you know, I read these things. Uh, they, they teach it in colleges. They do theses on my, on my movie. And I go, I didn't know I was that smart. Because I just wrote something from the heart. I didn't write to put all these metaphors. I just, I just wrote about archetypes and about growing up in our neighborhood. And for some reason, you know, I wrote lightning in a bottle, and it and it just works. Yep. It worked as a movie. It I worked as a play. musical. I haven't seen the play yet. Still, Have you ever I, seen the one-man show? No. I all heard right. rave reviews about it. Well, here's it. what I'm going to do. If When you go to chazpalmentary.net, you'll go on that. If you see a date that, you know, where you're off... And you want to come, you just let me know okay. and I'll have two tickets for you. Thank you. Anytime. I'm going to bring my wife. Anytime. Yeah, anytime. And if, and if you need four, if your son's in town or your daughter, whatever. Thank you. You let me know. No, that's Same here. With, you that's know, my, that's same my here. To come to one of my shows. My son. Just don't sit up front. I'll spit on you. No, no. We, one thing I, know, I learned, I've been going to comic shows for a long time. You don't sit in no. front. Well, I don't pick on people. Yeah. Oh, I'm you not don't? Don Rickles. Okay. It's all self-depreciating you. It's all on yeah. me. Okay. And I don't do shout outs, which I'll never understand. Hey, right. can you give me a shout? No, no. It's about the guy on stage. I got you. I got you. Why yeah. I gotta give if I gotta give you a shout, I I, I gotta give everybody. Then now the whole no, no, crowd's no, alienated. No, no. Once you say he's in the audience, I don't exactly. do that. I don't do it. Exactly. You can't do it. You can't. <coughs> no, excuse me, because then another comic comes or another actor comes, he goes, you know, you said it about him. What about me? I say, look. It's not about shout outs. They're probably some of those Italians we were talking about. Oh, yeah. I mean, a few people I did give a shout out to when he came to see me, of course, Robert De Niro. Oh, I mean, of course. Look, excuse me right. if I gave Robert De Niro that he was in the audience. No, I'm sorry. I would sorry. give you a shout out. Don't, give oh, me, don't no, misunderstand. Right. I'm talking about regular fans. How about that text let's, me? Let's, Can you give me, wish me a happy second? Yeah. I'm going to stop in the middle of my act and wish you a birthday because nobody <laughs> gives a shit about you. Don't you understand? Nobody. And you think the people sit with them, hey, asshole, sit down. You're making, you're embarrassing the whole table. Right. Now, how do you deal with hecklers, Vic? Do you deal with them? I or? really don't have that problem. Yeah, you know what's happening they're now? They're afraid. I'm getting heckled by my own material. People are yelling out bits of mine. Oh. And it's fucking me up. I mean, they're not being malicious. Ah. Hey, do Tony Gaga. How long gonna wait? Talk about your mother-in-law. Talk about Eddie the cat. How's your wife? Where's your son? It, it's crazy. It's got to, I got, my fans are the most loyal. That's great. And supportive fans. They're great. They yeah. really are. Yeah. Oh, that's, I mean, you know, Vic, you are, you are one of those classic old school guys. And, and I, I am really honored for you to be on my show. Seriously. You, I'm triple no, honored to I, be on I, your it's show. It's like folks. I mean, coming here, I'm, I'm like, am I really fucking going to no. Pum and Terry's house? Nah, what the fuck? This guy. So there's your camera, Vic. Tell us where you're going to be. Where you, anything you want to say that's coming well, up. Well, it depends when this airs. Does it make sense? It's going to air in a couple of oh, weeks. Uh, the Hard Rock Casino in Atlantic City in October. The Count Basie Theater. 
Just go to Vic D. Bittetto, D I B I T E T T O, Vic D. Bittetto.net. Worst comes to worst, go to Google. All you got to do is type in Vic D. I am the highest, I'm the first on top. First one. When it comes to, this. I'm before right. Vic Damone, and everything's there. All the links are there. And don't call me to ask you, how do I get tickets? Call the venue. When you go see Bruce Springsteen, do you call him or you go to his <laughs> website? Come on, folks. Right. Help me to help you. You know why Italians do that, Vic? They want free tickets. Exactly. How many friends call you? Hey, hey, Vic, I really want to come and see your show. My wife and we're going to go, but how do I get tickets? So now you're put on the spot. I hate that. No, I don't. You know what I do? I say, you know how to get tickets. I had a guy, um, quickly, I had a guy who said to me, a friend of mine, he said, Chaz, I want to come and see you on Broadway, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, uh, I need eight tickets. Eight tickets, Broadway tickets. You know how much that is? So I go, excuse me. I said, come on, what do you do for a living? He goes, what do you mean? I go, yeah. you're, you're a carpenter, mm -hmm. right? I said, you make beautiful furniture for people. I said, do me a favor. My wife, she wants all new cabinets. Could you work that out for me? <laughs> and he said, what? I go, what do you mean? I go, no, no, she wants yep. to redo the cabinets in the whole house. Good for you. I said, could you redo that? He goes, well, Chaz, yeah, but I got to talk. I go, yeah, this is what I do. But they don't. What the fuck? This is, I'm not playing games here. This is not fun. <laughs> this is not fun. It's eight tickets, bro. Absolutely, yeah. You know, and then he said, oh, all right, all right. I said, you know how to get tickets, just, just call amazing. up. Just call up. But you're right. They don't call up Bruce Springsteen and no. ask him. They go to his website. Yeah. Go to the venue. Then they go to a third party. They complain they got ripped off. Right, right. Why did you do that? Oh, how about this? I did call. They said it sold out. Bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> right? But it's really a pleasure having you. And uh, you're, Thank you. you're a real gentleman. Thank you're you really too. You're really one of the real classic old school but you're legitimately funny. Folks, if you never saw this guy, you got to go see him. What you saw today was like a little, it's 10% of what this guy does. He's hysterical, funny, you'll laugh your ass off. I said it again, I'll say it again. Put him on your bucket list. Vic D. But oh shit. You got it, come on, try it again. D. Potato. Perfect. Vic D. Potato. Beautiful. You gotta see him, he's really amazing. Okay, that's the, that concludes the episode. Thank you so much. Don't forget, next week, you want to come and see my one-man show, ChazPalmentary.net. Get on it. We got merchandise. We got shout-outs. It's really exciting. God bless you all. See you next week.